In this video, we're going to talk about dividing fractions by whole numbers. So let's say we have a fraction like, um, let's say, 3 fourths, and we want to divide that by 3. Well, you might be thinking to yourself, oh, I know how I can do this. I can just, you know, keep, switch, flip, as we say. I can keep the first thing, 3 fourths, and I can um, switch the division to multiplication and then instead of 3 as a fraction, 3 over 1, I'm going to do 1 third. And I'm going to solve it that way. That's all fine and dandy, except we really want to try and understand why that works in the first place. So what we're doing today is, and as we start this new module on dividing with fractions, we're going to start by solving them with uh, graphic representations and rewriting these problems with words as a multiplication problem. So when we're thinking, you know, we're taking 3 fourths and we're dividing it by 3. Well, when I'm dividing something by 3, I, I know what the total is, right? I know that it's 3 fourths, but I want to actually find out, you know, what is, what's one third of this? So one way that we can rewrite it as we can rewrite it as multiplication by saying, you know, we're going to solve for one-third of three-fourths. And actually, if you think about it, this really is the same thing as the keep-switch-flip method because if you think about what of is, of is multiplication, so this is still ends up being one-third times three-fourths. But um, we're going to solve it using a picture. So the first thing that we do is we can make a nice little representation of three fourths. So first I'm going to just make a little diagram showing three fourths. So I make a box and I'm shading it in three fourths of the way. Doesn't have to be super fancy, but you can see here we have, you know, one, two, three things shaded three shaded out of a total of four. So that's my three-fourths. And what I was saying in class is, you know, we have this fraction that we're starting with, so let's start with that fraction as a picture. And now it wants us to divide this, or the three-fourths, again, by the number three. Well, first, I took this, you know, box that I started with, and I divided it up into fours by making these vertical lines. Well, if I wanted to divide it by three again, let's just make lines going across this way and divide it in the other direction. So we can then, we want to divide it by three, so I want to make, you know, I'm going to draw two lines, so that means I took this and now I divided it into one, two, three, and I'm going to shade one of these in, because I'm actually trying to solve for one third of it. So I want to shade one third of that fraction I just made. So now, to get my answer, what I'm really looking for is what overlaps. I'm noticing that all of these boxes overlap. These are both, you know, I have one, two, three boxes that are both red and blue. So three out of, and how many do I have? Well, this is one, two, three, one, two, three, four, so this is three high, four wide, so it's out of twelve. So three twelfths, or we could reduce it to one fourth. Okay, and actually if we go way back to the beginning and revisit the way that we are used to solving using algebra, us adults, you know, we have, you know, one times three is three, 3 times 4 is 12, so it gives, you know, the same thing. Let's do another example. Let's do, let's say we have, uh, let's, ju let's just do 1 half divided by, and let's do 5. Oops, not writing. Divided by 5. So I'm going to start with my 1 half. So here I have my half, starting off with my simple 
fraction model, and then I need to divide that by 5. So I'm going to, now I have, this first representation is kind of like columns. You can think of it as, you know, one, two columns, and I shaded my one out of the two. And now I want to make five rows. So I'm going to have to draw four lines. So one, two, three, four. And I'm trying to find out what one-fifth is, so I'm shading this. And I'm going to look for what is overlapping. This one right here is the only one. So I only have one that's both red and blue. So I have one out of now how many it's, you know, this whole thing is. This is two and this is five. So two times five is ten. So one tenth. And actually that, you know, makes sense. We can, m probably many of us could do one half divided by five in our head and get one tenth. Um, but we could also write this as a fraction, or sorry, as a multiplication problem. We could say that we're really finding one-fifth of one-half. Okay? And actually, if this whole overlapping business, if all of this is kind of confusing, what we're really doing is we're kind of taking a box that's a half, and then we're taking another box that is a fifth the other way you know this one was a fifth and we're kind of taking them and we're we're combining them so we're taking you know, we're taking this one in this example the blue matches and the green and the red ones match but we're taking this and we're laying it on top and we're saying hey what overlaps well this little area over here was the area that overlaps if we stick this on top of this one. So this is our a half, and this is our one-fifth. So we're trying to figure out, another way you could think of it is, you know, we're really trying to figure out what, we have our half right here, and we split this half into fifths. And so we're really finding out that, you know, we have one-fifth of one-half, and the reason why we have to actually count all the parts is because this is still representing the whole, so we still need to figure out, even though these aren't part of the half or part of the fifth, they're still part of the whole, so we divided the whole up into all these different pieces, so we've got to count all ten. So, hope that helps.